When you want to describe a scatter plot, there are five things that you need to include in your description for it to be complete. They are the context, the direction, if there are outliers, the form, and the strength. And we can remember that by using the first letter of each of these words in this acronym called CDOFs. Context, direction, outlier, form, and strength. You see context, direction, outlier, form, and strength. And you have to have all five of these for your answer to be correct and complete. So the first one in CDOFs is our context. What is this about? What is the distribution? So context is really just read the title and tell me what's happening. So here we have percent taking the SAT and the mean math score. So this graph shows a relationship between math score and percent taking the SAT. So in our CDOFs, we have context. Now we're gonna look at direction. Direction is just telling us, is the graph positive? So it's going up. Is it negative and it's going down? Or is there no correlation and there's no real direction up or down? So in this graph, there is a negative correlation here. The points are showing a downward trend. So we have context, direction, and now we're looking at outliers. Are there any unusual or influential points? And an outlier can be on the line, but just like away from the group, or it can be away from the line and the group. So if I draw my line here, and I'm asking, is there an outlier? Chances are um, this and this point maybe are outliers. We don't know. So we're going to use the word possible. It looks like they could be outliers. It looks like they could be kind of close. We don't know, so we kind of say maybe it's possible we would have to do some calculations to determine to determine if it's a true outlier, um, but we can say possible for right now. Form is just describing the look of the relationship. Is it linear, which means the lines increase or the points increase or decrease as a line, or is it non-linear? So it's something like um, an exponential or a parabola. There's a curve there. So if I draw this, even though they're kind of far away from the line sometimes, like I can see there's a pretty linear relationship here. Okay, we have our context, direction, outlier, form and our last part now is strength. How closely are the two variables related? So when I draw this line, I'm looking to see how close are they related. And I know that if they are on the line, that is going to be a perfect correlation. And the further away they get from the line, the weaker it becomes. So first, I have my positive correlations and I have my negative correlations. Well, this graph is negative, it's going down, so I'm gonna look at negative. I know there is a correlation here, right? I can see the trend, so I'm not gonna think it's no correlation. And I know it's not perfect because perfect would be if it's in a straight line, every point in a straight line. So when I think, is it strong or is it weak? And strong is going to be like really close to the line, whereas weak is a little spread out from the line. 
And this one, I would say, is weak. So we have our context, direction, outlier, form, and strength. Let's put it all together. So this is my answer. There is a weak negative linear correlation between the percent taking the SAT and the mean math score. There are two possible outliers. And I want to check to make sure that I have all five pieces because that is how you have a complete description. So context. My context is what is this graph about? I have it here, percent taking the SAT and the mean math score. Next one is direction. I say it's negative. Next, I have outlier. There are two possible outliers. Then I have form. I say it's linear. And finally, I have strength. I say it is weak. And I put it all together. Usually your strength, direction, and form, you can kind of put together one right after the other. And I like to just describe if there are outliers at the end. But as long as you have those five pieces, you are all set.